The GWM Canon Ute is certainly making a splash on the dual cab ute scene in Australia. Initial sales are really strong and buyers are increasingly being drawn to its headline price tag. But the question is, does this Chinese built ute really deserve to be cross shopped against established players or does it simply represent good value for money? I've been living with this one for the past couple of weeks, let's find out. The GWM Canon made quite the splash when it first appeared on the Australian scene at the beginning of 2021. In the time since, it has clearly struck a chord with value conscious buyers. Sitting at the top of the ute lineup is the Canon X tested here. Considerably less than mainstream rivals such as the Ford Ranger, Isuzu D-Max and Toyota Hilux and even undercutting the likes of the Mitsubishi Triton and LDV T60 in this trim. From afar, the Canon X hits the sweet spot where styling is concerned, fitted with 18-inch alloy wheels, LED headlights and lashings of chrome finish. The Canon X also offers pretty decent on-paper credentials with a 3-ton brake time capacity and a 1,050 kilogram payload. It also has four-wheel disc brakes, which is still a pretty neat feature in this segment. When you do dig a little bit deeper into the numbers though, it does look as though it's leaving itself a little bit short changed. Most notably with the engine bay. You have a two litre, four cylinder turbo diesel engine that makes 120 kilowatts and 400 Newton meters. That might not seem so bad in isolation, but when you consider this thing weighs 2.2 tons, it's got its work cut out. It's also well down in all the key established players in this segment. The diesel offers a claimed fuel consumption average of 9.4 litres per 100 k's, with a 78 litre fuel tank delivering an advertised distance of more than 800 kilometres between refills. To their credit, GWM have actually done a pretty remarkable job of squeezing all the equipment they can into the Canon X for under $50,000. And when you do jump into the cabin, it feels quite lush with its layout and with the standard equipment, things like wireless phone charging, heated seats, digital instrument cluster, and much more. Everything feels pretty well appointed. There's soft contact points, the seats are comfortable, and it's a fairly nice place to spend long amounts of time. Again, the devil is in the detail. There are some, I guess, naff elements to the interior styling, and it could be a little bit nicer in terms of the materials that have been used. And there are a couple of notable squeaks and rattles inside our test example, which has amassed about 15,000 kilometers so far. Storage is middle of the road for the dual cab segment with door pockets and an adequate array of incidental spaces. Okay, so the native infotainment system probably isn't the most intuitive or user-friendly going. There's a couple of two-stage processes where you have to press a button like the heated seats and then go through the screen. But all in all, it is functional, it works quite well, and it does mate well with Apple CarPlay as well. My biggest gripe probably comes from the uh, instrument cluster. So the, the biggest sore point, it doesn't work with polarized glasses. If you're wearing polarized glasses, you can only see sort of half the screen. You've got to nod your head up and down to be able to see everything. And the other thing is that a lot of the instrumentation is so small that it's not going to be legible for older eyes. The Canon X covers most of our basic items as standard, with the exception of hardwired sat-nav and a head-up display. When it comes to safety, the GWM carries a five-star rating under 2021 guidelines, covering all eight of our criteria as standard. The rear seat space is likewise strong, with moderate proportions and storage. The space is also serviced by rear air vents, a USB charging point, and a household power outlet. The tray area itself is also pretty appealing from a distance. Firstly, the tailgate is damp, sounds simple, but it does actually make day-to-day -day life quite a bit easier. There's also this novel step, which I have actually found pretty handy in terms of getting in and out of the vehicle. Again, if you look a little bit closer, there are some missing details. There's no tray light, and the tie-down points are a little bit light on as well.
Okay, so quite often it's those little 1% touches that really distinguish actually living with a car from what's written in the brochure. And if I'm completely honest, that's where the GWM Canon lets itself down a little bit because it does sort of fail on getting those 1% touches exactly right. I'll give you an example, it's kind of evident as soon as you pull away from the curb site, throttle modulation. It's a little bit inconsistent with the way that the throttle is applied through the pedal. There's a bit of a delay, so when you stick your foot down, there's nothing, 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 and then bang, it sort of takes off. Uh, it kind of feels like turbo lag, but compounded again. So you've just got that inconsistent pedal action that just irks you after enough time at the wheel. It's a similar story with other little 1% features in the GWM Canon, things like the cruise control, which surges quite frequently when you have it set, even on a flat surface. Um, the tuning of the key controls as well, the steering feels a little bit approximate, a little bit agricultural compared to what's out there in the segment. And even the ride and handling balance, this is pretty busy, pretty jittery, and it is afflicted with that tremoring that does affect all dual cab utes, but it just feels that little bit unrefined in the Canon compared to its key rivals. We also found the tuning of the usually sound 8-speed ZF Automatic another blight on the driving experience, regularly hunting for gears, particularly on inclines. Another annoyance is the tuning of the safety aids, in particular the intrusiveness of the lane keep assist system. So I mentioned before the throttle modulation, that aside, the diesel itself is pretty good in daily conveyance. I say in daily conveyance because when you get to towing and actually putting a load on the back, it does feel a bit more strained. But in day-to-day -day scenarios, it picks up speed pretty well. It works quite nicely with the eight-speed automatic transmission. It puts power down quite nicely. And there is a bit of an agricultural diesel rattle, but nothing that's that far removed from the rest of the segment. When it comes to load carrying, even Five, 600 kilograms on board, this little two litre turbo diesel does feel a little bit underwhelming with its power and torque. It needs to work hard, so therefore it uses more fuel, therefore it makes more noise inside the cabin, and just doesn't feel as effortless or as refined as it could be, especially with new V6 options coming to this segment, like the Ford Ranger, like the new Volkswagen Amarok. They certainly put this little 120 kilowatt four cylinder turbo diesel to shame when it comes to power, efficiency, and that inherent in gear torque that diesels are really known for. But that aside, it gets up, it moves quite well. Um, power to weight is obviously a, a, a real feature with this car. It's just not as good as any of its benchmark rivals. It really does sort of bring home that you kind of get what you pay for with this car. I feel like as a result, the GWM Canon is sort of sound as a day-to-day -day recreational ute, but as a tool of trade, I've towed with this vehicle, I've had a load on the back, it just doesn't feel as strong as it would need to be for a day-to-day -day work vehicle. The GWM is backed by a seven year unlimited kilometre warranty in Australia, together with sound servicing costs. The caveat being the Canon's 10,000 kilometre servicing intervals are slightly shorter than most rivals. The GWM Canon proves that there's truth in the old adage that you get what you pay for. So on one hand, while it does match or beat many of its rivals for value and price, in reality, it lets itself down in some key areas. So all in all, it's great as a runabout lifestyle ute, but as a serious tool of trade, it has some big limitations.